Have non-Catholic family members, friends, or co-workers ever asked questions about your faith and you didn't know how to answer? Don't worry, help is on the way. I'm John Martinoni, just an average guy sitting out there in the pews, and I'm here to help you learn how to answer those tough questions using nothing but a little common sense, some simple logic, and your Bible. Anyone can defend the faith, even you. Yes, even you. So grab your Bible and get ready. You don't want to miss this. It's explaining and sharing your faith for average Catholics. It's blue collar apologetics. Well, I mean, well, there are a lot of weird things, Catholic things, that aren't in the Bible. Like you guys believe in was it, worshiping oh, Mary yeah. and the saints, praying to some dead guy that's been dead for like <laughs> 18,000 years. Yeah. Uh, oh, the Pope. Where, where is that in the Bible? And, uh, okay. Uh, purgatory okay. is definitely not I, in the Bible. I don't have a lot of time before we need to leave. Can we just start running? Oh, that's fine. Okay. 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 Have you ever had to deal with questions like that? Have you ever found yourself face to face or maybe email to email with someone who questioned or even attacked your Catholic faith? Maybe it was a family member or a friend or a coworker. Where in the Bible is purgatory? Where in the Bible is the Pope? Where in the Bible is infant baptism? Where in the Bible is this? Where in the Bible is that? Did you know what to do? Did you know how to answer them? Would you like to know what to do and how to answer them? Well, I'm going to show you exactly what you can do and say in a situation like that. And not only am I going to show you how to deal with questions like that, questions that a lot of us Catholics face sooner or later, but I'm going to show you how to turn the tide and start asking the other guys questions about the Bible. Questions that I guarantee you they won't be able to answer. Questions that I guarantee will stop a lot of folks in their tracks and make them really have to think about and answer questions that will cause them to have to really examine what they believe and why they believe it. My name is John Martinoni. I'm the president of the Bible Christian Society and also the director of evangelization for the Diocese of Birmingham here in Alabama. And in this ser series of shows, which we're calling Blue Collar Apologetics, I'm going to teach you how to be a Catholic apologist. That's right. I'm going to teach you, yes, you, how to be a Catholic apologist. I'm going to teach you how to explain and defend the faith with anyone, and I mean anyone. I've been involved with evangelization and apologetics for about 20 years or so now, and in that time I've met a lot of people who were very shy for any number of reasons about sharing their faith with others. One of the main reasons they were hesitant to share their faith, though, was because no one had ever shown them how to do it and they were afraid of, of getting embarrassed or, or making a mistake. For example, what if you have an evangelical brother-in-law and it seems like he has at least half the Bible memorized while you maybe have trouble finding Genesis? How could you possibly evangelize this guy? I mean, if you try, he's going to start talking Bible and you're going to get left in the 2,000-year-old dust of ancient Israel, right? Well, I'm here to tell you it doesn't have to be that way. The reason I call what I do blue-collar apologetics is because it is something that is for pretty much every man, woman, and child out there watching this program right now. I don't care if you're 8 years old or 80 years old or anywhere in between. I can teach you how to be a Catholic apologist. I've had moms tell me that their 8 or 9-year-old kids listen to and learn from my materials and even on occasion use them to evangelize their friends. Imagine nine-year-olds evangelizing their nine-year-old friends. It can and does happen. I've also had grandmas and grandpas who have been Catholic all their lives use the information we're going to be talking about in this series to evangelize lifelong friends. Again, pretty much anyone can use blue-collar apologetics to share, explain, and defend their faith with others. That's because blue-collar apologetics are based on common sense and simple logic. You don't need a Ph.D. or a master's degree or a bachelor's degree or anything like that in order to do what I'm going to show you how to do. Hey, folks, I'm from Alabama. If I can do it, you can do it, right? This stuff is for the young or old, rich or poor, those with advanced degrees, those with no degrees, for men or women, for laity and clergy, for Catholic and even non-Catholic alike. That's right. 
I've had a lot of non-Catholics get a hold of my materials. Sometimes it helped bring them into the church. Sometimes not. But it always helped give them a better appreciation and understanding of what Catholics believe and why we believe it. I guess what I'm trying to say is that there is something here for everyone. Okay, that's the blue collar part of the title of this series. You don't need an advanced degree to do this stuff. It's for the average Catholic out there in the pews every Sunday. What about the other part of the title? Apologetics. Most of you who watch EWTN on a regular basis probably know what the word means. But just in case you don't, apologetics is simply about being able to explain and defend the faith. In ancient Greece, an apologia was the case a lawyer would make on behalf of his client. So just as a lawyer builds a case for his client, apologetics is about building the case for the faith. And one important point to always keep in mind here, apologetics is about presenting the evidence for our faith. It's not necessarily about trying to prove anything. We present the evidence, we plant the seeds, but it is up to the Holy Spirit to make those seeds grow and bear fruit. Both faith and reason are involved. We offer the evidence, build the case, throw out the seeds, and then let the Holy Spirit work on the heart and mind. It is the Holy Spirit who tills the soil and makes the seed grow and bear fruit. All right. That explains why we're calling this series Blue Collar Apologetics. Now, I want to give you a little overview of what we'll be doing in the next few episodes. Everything I'm going to be doing here is based on a simple principle. I once heard it said that the Catholic faith is like a lion in a cage. You don't need to defend it. You simply need to open the cage door. That's what I want to do in this series. I want to teach you how to open the cage door. I'm going to give you some techniques or strategies which will enable you to engage in apologetics and evangelization, which will enable you to open the cage door with pretty much anyone, even if, even if, you don't really know the Bible all that well. Although, as we go through this, your knowledge of Scripture is going to grow. So, blue-collar apologetics is simply about being able to explain and defend the faith in a common-sense way. It uses common-sense techniques and strategies that are pretty easy to remember because, again, they're just basic common sense. And it also uses simple logic and the Bible. And if you're concerned, you might not know the Bible well enough to engage in a discussion about the faith with folks who call themselves Bible Christians. Don't worry about that. I've got you covered. Okay, let's get started. The first thing I want to do is to stress that all I'll be using in this series, again, is, is common sense, a little logic, and the Bible. And the reason I focus on the Bible is because whenever we as Catholics talk about our faith with Protestants or Evangelicals or Baptists or non-denominationalists and so on, the number one most frequently asked question is, where is that in the Bible? Or we're told over and over again that this or that teaching of our faith isn't in the Bible. Whether the topic is the Pope, Mary, confession, purgatory, the Eucharist, works, tradition, it doesn't matter. It always comes back to, where is that in the Bible? These folks don't care what the Pope says or what the Catechism says or what Vatican II says. They want to know what the Bible says, period. So if you, as a Catholic, are not prepared to answer the question, where is that in the Bible, you may not get very far when it comes to a religious dialogue with most Protestants. Well, what if you, as a Catholic, don't know where it is in the Bible? Are you dead in the water? And what if... It isn't in the Bible, at least not directly. The Catholic Church's teachings on the Immaculate Conception and the Assumption, for example, are not found directly in the Bible. So what do you do when you're asked, where, where does it say anything about the Immaculate Conception in the Bible? What do you do? Are you helpless? Should you look for somewhere to hide? Should you say, look, what's that over there? And when they turn, you take off running in the other direction. What do you do? It is my contention that many Catholics today are afraid to discuss their faith with non-Catholic Christians because quite often they don't know how to deal with the question, where is that in the Bible? Many of us have probably had a Baptist or evangelical or fundamentalist, whoever, someone has probably beaten us over the head with the Bible at least once in our lifetimes. 
which may have made us a little gun shy and which has led many Catholics to hold to the mistaken notion that just about any and every Protestant knows the Bible better than we do. Well, let me tell you, they don't. They may have more scripture passages memorized than you, but memorizing scripture is not the same thing as knowing the Bible better. As Catholics, we have the magisterium of the church as our guide when we open up the Bible. The magisterium, which is the Pope and the bishops in union with the Pope, has the apostolic authority with which to give God's people an authentic interpretation of Scripture. The magisterium has, in essence, laid down the parameters or the boundaries within which we are free to interpret Scripture. Non-Catholic Christians, however, whether they call themselves Protestant, Baptist, Evangelical, Pentecostal, non-denominational and such, have no such authentic guide for interpreting Scripture. They have their own personal, fallible interpretations to rely on. They have no boundaries within which to properly interpret Scripture. And let me tell you, there's some outright craziness going on out there when it comes to folks interpreting the Bible on their own. In the past few years, I've dealt with something called right division of Scripture that seems to be running through a lot of uh, non-denominational and fundamentalist congregations all over the place. Right division of Scripture in a nutshell says that Jesus came for the Jews as Scripture says, and that Paul is the apostle to the Gentiles, as Scripture says. Therefore, since we are Gentiles, not Jews, we need to listen to Paul and not to Jesus. We need to focus on what Paul says. What Jesus said in the Gospels isn't meant for us. It's meant for the Jews. Well, let me tell you, that's nuts. But that's what happens when you don't have an authoritative guide who can lay down some boundaries for you. Now, as I said, I want to outline some techniques and strategies for you which will help you in dealing with folks who might be able to quote more chapter and verses than you can. I want to outline some techniques and strategies for you which will help you in articulating your faith, in explaining your faith to others. Some techniques and strategies that will help you to open the cage door. But before I do that, let me very quickly go over what I call the rules of engagement for you when you step out and start evangelizing. First, we need to keep in mind, always keep in mind, 1 Peter 3.15, which says, always be prepared to make a defense to anyone who calls you to account for the hope that is in you. Always be prepared, Scripture tells us. So, how can we always be prepared to make a defense of our faith? Rule of engagement number one. Pray to the Holy Spirit that he give you the courage to share your faith and the wisdom to choose your words carefully and profitably. You pray before you ever talk with someone. You pray while talking to them. And you pray after you've talked to them. You and I don't convert anyone, folks. It's the Holy Spirit that changes the hearts and minds of men. Our job, again, is to plant the seeds. And then when we pray for the Holy Spirit to, to help those seeds grow and bear fruit, we have to be people of prayer. Rule number two, you don't have to know everything right now. Just learn a little bit more about your faith each and every day. Read scripture, read the catechism. Read the catechism all the way through or just pick one topic at a time to read about. However you want to do it. Read books on or by the saints. Listen to CDs and MP3 downloads. Read books, attend conferences on apologetics. Keep watching EW10 television. If you have EW10 radio in your area, make sure you listen to it while you're in your car. Learn a little bit at a time. As you do, God will bring you into situations where you can share your faith with others. Rule of engagement number three comes from Luke 5, verse 10. Do not be afraid. Henceforth, you will be catching men. Jesus said this to Peter, but he's also saying it to us. Will you make mistakes? Will you get into tight spots when you start sharing your faith with others? Yes, of course you will. But Peter made mistakes. He got into tight spots. Yet Jesus told Peter not to be afraid. Why? Because if we are sincere in our desire to share the truth with others, to share Jesus Christ with others, then Jesus will find a way to make good come out of even our mistakes. But you must be sincere in your desire. You do not become an apologist for your faith in the hope of winning an argument about Scripture with your Protestant friends or your fundamentalist brother-in-law. Apologetics is not about winning arguments. It is about sharing the truth. Again, it is about planting seeds. Study apologetics so as to win souls for Christ and His bride, the church. 
study apologetics so as to deepen your own faith and spirituality. If you do that, then the next time the opportunity presents itself, you will not be afraid to speak out in defense of your faith. Rule of engagement number four. Always view a question about your faith or even an attack on your faith as an opportunity, an opportunity to share the truth. Do not get angry. Never, ever get angry. Just stay calm and stay determined to bring light into darkness. Whenever someone questions or attacks your faith in front of you, that ought to cause a big smile to come onto your face because you know that God has just opened a door for you. So don't get angry. If you get angry, it might cause that door to shut. Do not let that door shut. Rule of engagement number five, don't get frustrated. Quite often Catholics get frustrated by what I call the doctrinal dance. You get asked a question about purgatory, and then when you start to answer that question, you get asked a question about Mary. When you start to answer that question, you get asked a question about the Pope. When you start to answer that question, you get asked a question about the sacraments, all in rapid-fire succession, boom, boom, boom. Before you can answer one question, you're asked another. Before you can answer that question, you're asked another. And on and on it goes, the doctrinal dance. Just keep gently but firmly guiding the discussion back to one topic until you've said all that you want to say, then move on. Rule number six, this is very, very important. Never be afraid to say, I don't know, when you're asked a question about your faith. Don't try to wing it. Never give it your best guess. However, always follow, I don't know with, but I will find out and get back to you. And then make sure you find out and get back to them. Okay, those are the six rules of engagement. If you commit those to memory and practice them, just those six rules will make you more comfortable and confident when you share your faith with others. All right, we're going to take a break here, and when we return, I'm going to introduce you to the four apologetic strategies that we're going to be talking about in the next few programs. These four strategies form the basis for blue-collar apologetics. So stay tuned, and we'll be right back. 